uh, you're watching the number one podcast in the YouTube wrestling community, and I'm your host, John Paul Leek, and this is Rope Break Family. Tuesday morning, you already know what it is, Monday Night Raw Review, and you also already know that this show was awful. I mean, the only saving grace from this show, I will really say, is that we had a lot of the matches on this show were very long. So, you know, you didn't have to see hundreds of awful segments, only maybe, you know, 50 or 60 awful segments instead. But, you know, still not a very good Monday Night Raw. But before we really get into it, I want to thank each and every one of you guys for all the support, new subscriptions, comments, likes, shares, everything on the videos. We greatly appreciate it. Keep doing what you're doing, and we're going to keep doing what we do. And, of course, if you haven't already, this is the start of a new week. Go check out all the content and everything from last week. So let's get into the Monday Night Raw review, shall we? So the show opens up, we see MVP, you know, him, Lashy, all the women and everything. They're in the ring. And MVP says that a dark cloud has been hanging over them, called Drew McIntyre. Lashy says that he beat Drew twice now, so he doesn't need to do it again. MVP says they wanted to move on, and Kofi Kingston stepped up, but McIntyre appeared again. So then at this point, you know, when he says that Drew's music hits, he's like, see what I mean? Again, you know, he just keeps reiterating how Drew keeps getting in their business. So Drew comes to stage and says his business is getting that title back. He says he'd have to beat Lashy twice now, or he'd have beaten Lashy twice now if it wasn't for MVP and Braun Strowman. Drew says Lashy wants the one-on-one -on -one match as much as he does. Lashy calls him pathetic and desperate. So then Kofi Kingston and Xavier Woods come out. Kofi says he pinned Lashy last week, and Drew says, you're welcome. Kofi gets a noise, and he says he didn't ask for help. He never got a rematch for the WWE Championship from a few years ago. Rematch clauses are non-existent anymore, so shut up, Kofi. Adam Pierce then comes out and says Kofi can face Drew tonight, and the winner faces Lashley at Hell in a Cell for a WWE Championship. So then that leads into, at least that match wasn't the main event. They already had the main event slated, which, awful main event, but, you know, at least it was planned ahead and they didn't switch it around like they normally do. But this segment was, was you know, I did like some points, and some points I was, like, pretty annoyed. I like Lashley, MVP, and everything. And Drew does have a point, you know, hey, Kofi, I helped you out. Kofi's like, you know, he had like he pinned Lashley all on his own. So Kofi's an idiot in this segment, but that doesn't surprise me that Kofi's the idiot. And then we get Drew McIntyre versus Kofi Kingston. And of course, Xavier Woods is out there. And this match was really good. By the time this was over, it was like 830. So like I said, you know, a really good chunk of the show went to this opening segment and then the accompanying match. And it was good. Drew, you know, he made Kofi look good. He sold for him. But then every time Kofi went into a cover or something like that, it was a strong kick out at one or, you know, barely a two tender. And if you drew was clearly the stronger, more dominant guy in this match. But I just mean really good stuff. You know, like he dropped Kofi on the apron, um, you know, and, and kind of just like a, a suplex from the middle rope and everything. You know, Kofi hit his offense, Drew hit, you know, he I think Kofi countered like a Glasgow kiss and stuff. Really good stuff. But at the end of this thing. We return from commercial break, and Drew hits a back suplex from the top rope. Yep, like I was talking about, MVP and Lashley, they're at ringside now because they, they were like, we want to watch this match. They had the VIP lounge set up on the stage, you know, with all the women and everything they were watching this. McIntyre, he hits a spine buster for a two, and then a sit-out power bomb for another near fall. Kofi sidesteps Drew, sending him along the ring post, and goes up for the top for a frog splash. To the back for a two count, Kofi sends Drew outside and jumps off the ropes onto him. Also crashing onto Lashley and MVP in the process. Kingston drags McIntyre inside. He hits an SOS, but Lashley and MVP rush in and attack them both. So we see a no contest, which is, you know, you're thinking, hmm, what's this leading to? Don't worry. This match wanted to be main event so bad. It's probably going to be main event next week. Because then afterwards, Drew and Kofi, they fight uh, back and MVP's tossed outside. Then McIntyre hits a claymore to Lashley and the Hurt Business retreats. So then Charlotte Flair... She's talked to by Ray Ripley backstage uh, earlier and told her that she beat her before and she'll do it again. Flair says that Ripley is a lame version of her and she knows it. So Nikki Cross appears and she challenges them both. Flair says that she already has a match, but uh, um, she kind of just like goats Ray Ripley into taking the match by saying that she couldn't beat her in two minutes. So pretty much it's like a beat the clock challenge, which I thought they were joking with this whole two minutes thing, but they weren't. It's a beat the clock challenge. So Ray Ripley versus Nikki Cross. So then we get that match, and pretty much Ray just toys with her. 
you know, she just doesn't, you know, just like, oh, you're a joke, you know, whatever. You got 30, 40 seconds already go by. Then Nikki Cross starts hitting her offense, you know, big bulldog that she hits in the running bulldog from the corner, you know, big, you know, forearm strikes, elbow strikes, everything. So Ripley gets pissed and then, you know, she starts kicking her ass in the corner. The ref does the five count, like, hey, back off, what are you doing? You know, she lets her go, goes back to stomping her again, and time runs out. So Nikki Cross technically wins this thing. So you see Ray Ripley, she's pissed and everything. So what was the point of this? You know, I feel bad for Nikki Cross. That's the only thing I have to say. So then, you know, she's very excited after the match. And then out comes Charlotte. And then uh, pretty much, you know, she dances past Charlotte. And you see Ray is pissed. Charlotte just waves at her and smiles and gets ready for her match. And, you know, this it, it was so stupid. Ray has looked like a joke as a champion. Just, I mean, she's good. And, you know, the feud with her and Charlotte's going to be good, but she doesn't, ever since she lost to Charlotte at WrestleMania, she doesn't feel that legit. Like, she is. She's good in the ring. She has the presence, the look, but she just doesn't, there's just something missing. I really don't know what it is. I can't put my finger on it. So then when we come back from commercial break, Adam Pierce and Kofi, they're pissed off. They talk to, uh, I mean, excuse me, Drew McIntyre and uh, Kofi, they're pissed. They storm into Adam Pierce's office, and they say next week that they want to have a rematch. You know, because they're like, it's not going to go down like this. And he says, they will. And don't worry. And he's like, if MVP or Lashley get involved, they're going to be suspended for 90 days. Which, you know, he always said it was 90 days without pay. It should have been, he's going to be stripped of the belt. You know, make it like really extreme. Because if you're, if you can't defend the belt for 90 days, I'm pretty sure you have to forfeit it. So I don't know why they just didn't go to that extreme that, oh, 90 days without pay. Like these guys don't have money out the wazoo. So let me see. Oscar versus Charlotte Flair, too, because they couldn't leave well enough alone. We saw this last week. It was a great match. And then, you know, Oscar wins last week. Or so they have to do it again is what I was trying to say. But it's like, you know, Oscar won last week. And then, you know, Charlotte wins this week. And then Charlotte's get thrown into the Hell in the Cell match. So what was Oscar's win last week? That didn't mean anything. Now, I know we saw a one-on-one -on -one match already with Oscar and Reyes. So do we really want to see it again? Eh, you know, do Charlotte. And, and maybe they'll take the belt off short. Maybe they feel the same way I do, where Rhea is great, but she's missing something. She needs to find whatever piece she's missing, and then she'll feel, you know, real legit again. But she is the future. It's not like, oh, you take the belt off her, she's doomed for the rest of her career. No, she is the future of this women's division. But you need to do something. I think you really need to turn her heel. She needs to have a few non-title with somebody like a Becky Lynch or something. But see, that's the problem, is they only have these three women, Charlotte, Oscar, and Rhea, and the rest of the division is non-existent. But this match, you know, there's pretty much just submission versus submission. Yet Charlotte was working over the legs. Oscar was attacking like the arms and everything, you know. But this match wasn't as good as last week. There was no way they could have followed that. And I mean, it was still good, but last week's match I thought was a lot better. But at the end of this thing, uh, Charlotte catches Oscar in the corner. She hits a backbreaker. Flair goes up top. She looks for a moonsault again, but Oscar rolls. So Charlotte pulls another Andrade and she does the standing moonsault for a near fall. So she does one of his moves. And I believe she did like the back elbow, kind of like, you know, like the Judas effect or whatever, like Andrade does. So she was hitting some of his offense. So that was pretty cool. You see her switching up her moves and everything. And since Andrade doesn't work here anymore, it's now Charlotte's offense instead of Andrade. So would you look at that? And then uh, Oscar looks for the Oscar lock, but Charlotte rolls back and then she gets her pin for the one, two, three. So it's like, eh, you know, a sneaky win there. But Charlotte wins. And later on, which, you know, they said that she's going to be in the, you know, she's going to challenge Rhea at hell in the cell so that should be a really good match there and i mean i don't like i said i don't want to see oscar and ray again so this was what it was but it makes you think last week's match was useless and then this week's match all of a sudden was number one contender so then we see bobby lashley he's relaxing backstage with his ladies when somebody walks in and tells him that adam pierce wants to see him so then pierce asks lashley why he screwed up the match earlier lashley says he's the only man fit to be the face of raw so he was trying to help pierce by stopping it Pierce tells him that the match will happen again next week. And if either of them get involved, they will lose a month's wages. So Lashley is forced uh, from the room by MVP because he gets pissed. I believe he actually did say 90 days, so not a month. So, you know, I don't know. But uh, Shelton Benjamin, then he comes out for a match against his opponent, Cedric Alexander. So then Cedric gets on the microphone before the match. If he says that he used to be the best thing in WWE for the past year, he reiterates that they were kicked out of the Hurt Business because of Shelton. And he says he's young and he'll rebound, but Shelton is past it. You know, like past his prime. And Benjamin, he gets furious. Corey Grace is a Cedric as a personality of a cinder block. You know, he's saying, I'm, I'm normally trying to be biased, but I'm pulling for Shelton here. 
and everything. And then the match, you know, it starts out Shelton really dominates this thing. You know, he looks good in the beginning of, he actually looked good for most of the match. Um, you know, but Cedric, I was w wondering how they were going to do this. If Shelton was going to go over again and you're going to push Shelton a little bit and Cedric, maybe, you know, I, I don't know what you were going to do with him, but at the end of this thing here, we see uh, Shelton, he grabs him from behind, but Alexander rakes his eyes. Then he connects with the handspring and Seguri, pins him for the one, two, three. So the ref, he didn't see the eye rake or anything. So it was a cheating win. So maybe I, this view is probably going to continue, but we, I just want, want to know what the end result is. It got to be whoever wins, which I wish it would be Shelton, you know, from this feud to go after somebody like uh, maybe he challenges Bobby Lashley again for the title. You know, that would be something cool. You know, put him in a championship match on a pay-per-view. I don't know if he ever challenged for the World Heavyweight Championship on a pay-per-view. Or maybe do him and Sheamus, like I've been saying. But, you know, we'll see where this feud goes. So then after that, we see a replay of Randy Orton hitting uh, Kofi and Woods with RKO two weeks ago. And then last week, Riddle tried to patch things up, but ended in shoving Xavier Woods down. And Riddle faces him after the break. So then we get Riddle versus Xavier Woods. And the, uh, this match, you know, this was pretty even. and like. Even though I'm annoyed by the New Day every time they speak, when I hear their music and everything, when these guys actually wrestle and they're serious, they're good. You can't take that away from them. And Riddle's good as well. And like I said, all these matches were really long. So that, again, you know, it, it's fine when, when the guys are actually acting serious and they're two legitimate competitors in there. So this was good. But at the end of this thing, they scale the ropes, both tumble off. Wood uh, kicks Riddle from the apron, and Riddle knees Woods as he attempts to re-enter. Riddle gets on the middle rope and hits a massive German suplex over the ropes into the ring. Woods, uh, he lands right on his head, and Riddle wants the floating bro, but Woods dodges it and hits a discus form. They trade counters, and then eventually, you know, he kind of just, like, shoves him or punches him. So then Riddle hits an RKO. You know, of course, Woods wasn't expecting that, so he didn't have no counter or anything for it. He hits an RKO from the one, two, three. You know, this was really good. And a lot of this, you know, Riddle was really making Woods look good in this with his athleticism. Like he did something where he pretty much jumped up and Woods caught him on his shoulders and hit like a German, hit like a suplex of his own or something. And that was all Riddle. That wasn't Xavier Woods lifting him up. That was all Riddle. So, I mean, you know, really good match and the right winner here. And I love how he used Randy Orton's finisher kind of be like, yeah, him and I are bros. Screw you guys. So then we see AJ Styles versus Jackson Riker. And this match is awful. You have Elias get involved. He, you know, he takes out AJ. And then Jackson Riker gets the, you know, gets the real quick, easy win. And th this was bad. I don't understand why you do this to AJ, why you present him like a joke. Corey Graves even said before the match, oh, he's probably the best competitor of the last decade. Is he? Not the way you present him here. So this was bad. I'm not even going to – the match was really short. It wasn't even a match, if you ask me. And like I said, you see Elias, he's – hiding behind the timekeeper's barricade. He comes out, uh, almost comes after him. He stands over him, chases him up the stage and everything. So we're going to see this feud continue. Does anybody care? No, this is, I'm sorry, but this is just awful. This is, you know, you, you're pretty much at like saying, AJ, do you, do you really want to leave? Because, you know, we're going to treat you like shit. You know, I don't understand why you have one of the best talents in the world and this is what you do with them. So then we see a replay of Sheamus' recent troubles with Humberto Carrillo, the United States champion comes to the ring where he'll face Humberto next. So then we see Sheamus versus Humberto for like the, what, third, fourth time. Again, you know, Humberto's really good. Lucha style. I feel like the guy is like, he can turn off gravity. The way he floats in the air is real like smooth and everything almost like Kurt Angle, but even better. You know, it's just like the guy is just weightless, but you knew Sheamus was going to win. You know what? I don't really understand what this whole feud is, especially with, you know, Ricochet and everything coming in. Because at the end of this thing, you know, as you see uh, Carrillo, when he starts getting some offense and everything, he does, he dives through the ropes with a suicide dive. Then back in, he hits a huge flying elbow. Like I said, he, he was pretty much tough, touching the roof of the Thunderdome. This dude can fly. Like, you know, he hit the big elbow for a two count, and then he wants a wheelbarrow, but Sheamus grabs him and pretty much sits down on him. One, two, three, Sheamus wins. And as soon as it ends, he starts beating Humberto up and everything. Then Ricochet comes in. He hits a huge drop kick off the top rope. Uh, then Carrillo super kicks Sheamus. Ricochet hits a springboard moonsault, and then, you know, they hit another moonsault on top of him, you know, and then finally Ricochet lands a 450. Sheamus rolls from the ring and holds his rib. So, you know, he, he couldn't sell it like he was laying in the ring done. He could only, you know, he was still able to roll out, so didn't really sell their offense too much, but 
you know, what are you going to do? A triple threat match at the next pay-per-view or the pre-show match at the next pay-per-view or something? I really don't know. And they need to do a little bit better to like put Humberto in a match that's, you know, not Sheamus, that he can get a win and get another win, get another win. Same with Ricochet. And then we go, oh, now I can maybe believe these guys beating Sheamus because otherwise they're just losing to Sheamus and, you know, they're losing any credibility and believability that I think they could beat him. So then we see Nia Jax and Reginald and Shayna Baszler. They're backstage and asked about their title match from last week. And uh, Baszler says that they lost because Nia got distracted with Reginald. And Nia argues that Reggie, you know, he just wanted to help. But Shayna tells him if she sees him at ringside, she'll give him something to really be scared of because he was, of course, scared of the Flames, Alexa Bliss, and everything like that. And then we also saw, you know, I, I forgot to mention it the past couple of weeks. You'll have to excuse me because it's, you know, probably the worst thing on Raw. And that's saying something. They showed, you know, two promos for uh, Eva Marie. They showed another one right before this match and everything. This ain't the evolution. You know, or, you know I want to be like Angelina Jolie. I want to be a role model. I want to be a heroine. I want to be all this stuff. You know, you look like you're on heroin. So I don't know. But, you know, th this is bad. She sucks. I don't care. So then we see the women's championship match. And, of course, this is all set up. They won the titles on SmackDown. Then they beat them on Monday Night Raw. But then SmackDown last Friday, the, they got pinned in a six-woman tag match. And then that automatically makes, you know, Shana, or Shayna submitted Natalia, whatever it was. So then that automatically makes them contenders again, just because they don't have any more teams in this women's tag division. So we had to see this match again. And, of course, this match was pretty much the same thing we've always seen. You see Natalia. She's the one who really just sells in there. She's the one who does a lot of the, you could say like, you know, oh, it gets beat up. Like I said, a lot of the selling. And Tamina was trying to get in there. She couldn't get in there. When she did, you know, it was like her and Nia, so the same old stuff fighting. Eventually, Reggie comes out. Shayna gets pissed, yells at Reggie. Nia and Tamina fighting on the outside. She's taken out. And then it's pretty much just Natalia and uh, Shayna in there. Like I said, Reggie comes out, causes a distraction. She yells at him, like, what the hell are you doing? Get out of here, all this stuff. So then eventually you just see Natalia. You know, more flames explode and everything. And then Reginald, he rolls back down the ramp, holding his face in the ring. Natalia, you know, she, because Baszler's distracted again. So she rolls her up for the one, two, three. Champs retain. At least we got the right winners. Again, a long match, way too long. Wasn't as good as the, you know, match at WrestleMania. None of these matches have been. So I don't know why you keep giving them to us, but it is what it is. And it's awful. And then after the match, we see Shayna Baszler. She goes out and checks on Reginald. When she's confident he's okay, she lifts him up, shouts at him. Baszler says that she's sick of him and she wants to face him next week. So if he has the balls to face her, she will get, make him wish the Flames have killed him. Baszler walks off as the show ends. So that's Monday Night Raw. You know what I mean? The show, it's, it's not a good show. It's really not. At least the only saving grace here was a lot of long matches. So, you know, it's a quick review for me because, you know, talking about this show hasn't been very fun the past couple of weeks. You know, it's always more fun when you have Juan here or somebody, but, you know, the, the, the show must go on and he'll be here for NXT, which at least, you know, it's, it's saying something when you say NXT is a breath of fresh air. But, folks, that's Monday Night Raw. Of course, let us know what you think in the comments. Do you like this show? Do you like the direction a lot of this stuff is going? You know, who do you want to see ne when next week's main event? Kofi, Drew? You know, whoever, tell us in the comments. But guys, thank you so much for watching. And don't forget, follow us on all the social media. Rope Break on Facebook, OG Rope Break on Twitter, Original Rope Break on Instagram, and of course, right here on YouTube, the home of the number one podcast in the YouTube wrestling community. So we will see you next time with NXT. Uh, the